Here we're gonna do a classic integral video. This one's gonna be pretty tricky, but only use elementary results that you might find in a Calculus 2 class or an integral calculus class, which I think makes this problem a great review for a course like that. So what we wanna do is find the antiderivative of one over the cube root of tangent x dx. And we're gonna start with like a standard u substitution. So we wanna look at this and see, well, what kind of u substitution should we make? Well, we'd probably like the stuff inside here to be something like a perfect cube. So maybe we, we would want u cubed to be equal to something in terms of tangent. And obviously the first thing you would try is just tangent. So u cubed equals tangent, that's gonna simplify everything nicely. But I'll let you guys play with it. And what you will see is that that turns this thing into a pretty gnarly integral. It doesn't really help very much. So what will make a nice simplification is if we let u cubed equal tangent squared of x. So that'll have everything cancel off very nicely. Okay, so let's see. If u cubed equals tangent squared of x, what does that tell us about tangent of x? Well, it's not too hard to see that tangent of x is going to be u to the 3 halves. So we're going to keep that around because we'll need it eventually. Okay, so next what we want to do is maybe calculate the du component in order to figure out what to do with this dx term. So let's see, taking the differential of both sides of this substitution equation will give us 3u squared du equals, we need to take the derivative of this with respect to x, we need to use the chain rule for that, so that'll be 2 times tangent of x times secant squared of x. Again, the tangent because of the power rule, and then secant squared is the derivative of tangent, and then we have dx. But what we need is to know what dx is in terms of all of our u stuff. So let's maybe make a simple solution for that by solving this equation, and then we'll start to resubstitute. So initially, we'll have dx equals 3 halves, then we'll have a big fraction with u squared in the numerator, we have tan x in the denominator and secant squared of x also in the denominator and then a du. But now we'll need to substitute the tangent term and the secant squared term back into u's. So let's see what we get for that. So we'll have 3 halves u squared. Then like we said, tangent of x is u to the 3 halves. So that's, that's good to know. And then secant squared. Well, what's secant squared? Well, I want to recall that secant squared is the same thing as 1 plus tangent squared. But since it's 1 plus tangent squared, that's going to be 1 plus u cubed. So I'll write this as 1 plus u cubed du. So now we can see that we'll substitute all of this in everywhere we see a dx up there. So that'll turn this integral, which has only x's into it, into an integral that has only u's. I guess we need one more thing here, but that's not too hard to see, and that is that the cube root of tangent here, so let's write this, the cube root of tangent of x is going to be equal to uh, the square root of u by this equation right here or by that equation right there just as well. Okay. Great, so now let's go ahead and make our substitution. So I'll take this three halves out front and then we'll have the antiderivative of, well in the numerator we've got a u squared and then in the denominator we'll have a square root of u, I'll write that as u to the half. We've got a u to the three halves and then we have finally a one plus u cubed du. So that's where we get all of our parts from our substitution. Next, we can see that this u to the half and u to the 3 halves multiply together to get u squared. So these two will cancel with this thing, leaving us a 1 in the numerator. Further, if you want to recall the sum of cubes formula, this 1 plus u cubed can be factored like 1 plus u times 1 minus u plus u squared giving us some motivation for our partial fraction decomposition. So this thing will be 
able to be decomposed via partial fractions as follows. So we'll have the antiderivative of a over one plus u du plus the antiderivative of bu plus c over one minus u plus u squared du. So that means we need to figure out how to take the partial fraction decomposition of one over one plus u cubed in terms of those two over there. So let's maybe get rid of this calculation involving the substitution and we'll make this partial fraction computation. So as a reminder, I've left our original substitution on the board. So we've got u cubed equals tangent squared of x. Now we wanna do the calculation for our partial fraction decomposition. So in other words, we wanna find a, b, and c that makes the following equation true. So we have one plus u cubed is a, over one plus u plus bu plus c over one minus u plus u squared. We're gonna do this calculation the standard way. So I'll take this and multiply by something that will cancel out all of the denominators. That'll be one plus u cubed. Then that gives us a polynomial equation. Then essentially, we're actually using a fact from linear algebra about what is a basis for the space of polynomials. So, but you don't really need to know all of those details. So let's see, if we multiply that one plus u cubed through, we'll have a one on the left-hand side. Then on the right-hand side, we'll have a times one minus u plus u squared because one plus u cubed factors like that, so obviously the one plus u term will cancel, and then we'll have bu plus c times one plus u. That's what's left over for that second term. So we've got a quadratic polynomial on the right-hand side, and, well, trivially a quadratic polynomial which has zero as the quadratic term and the linear term on the left-hand side. Now what we'll do is extract coefficients from every power of u on both sides of the equation. So I'll do that like this. I'll say one for extracting the constant term on both sides of the equation, u for extracting the u term, and then finally u squared for extracting the u squared term. So extracting the one term on the right hand side, so let's see if we can eyeball that, we'll have a, from a times one, and then we'll have also c from c times one. So I'll have a plus c equals one. So that gives us our first equation. And then the one comes from the one on the left-hand side. So let's do that for u. So let's see, from this object, we'll have minus a, then here we'll have plus b, and then plus c. So b u times one and then c times u. So here that's gonna give us zero because there's no u on the left-hand side. Now we need to do the same thing for the u squared term. So here we'll have a like that, and then the u squared term will be b. So a plus b equals zero. So we've got a system of three equations and three unknowns. So there's about a million ways to solve that Let's just hack it together. So this equation tells us that B equals negative A. Okay, so that tells us that this equation is going to become, let's see, minus A plus minus A, so that's gonna be minus two A. Then let's see if we can maybe use this as well. So this tells us that C equals one minus A. So we've got minus 2a plus 1 minus a equals 0, like that. Okay, so that's good. But notice that gives us the equation 3a equals 1. In other words, a equals 1 third. Okay, then notice that means that b equals negative 1 third from this equation right here. Oh, and then finally, we see that C is one minus a third, so C equals two thirds. So those are our three values of A, B, and C that make this partial fraction decomposition possible. So that means over here, we can go and replace this A with one third, this B with negative one third, and then this C with two thirds. Okay, great. 
But now we can do some simplification on that. So first off, notice that this three in the numerator can be canceled down to a one by canceling this to a one, this to a negative one, and then this to a two. So we've got something a little bit nicer. Okay, well let's maybe clean that up and we'll have a fresh problem to work on. Okay, so we're in a pretty good position. We've got our goal integral is equal to one half, and then the difference of these two integrals that are in the u domain, keeping in mind that this was our original substitution. So now this one has a fairly simple antiderivative, so we just need to worry about this guy over here. So let's see if we can do that. Now I'm gonna split this up into two integrals that we can calculate in different ways. And I'm gonna do this like in kind of a trick, but you'll see where it comes from. So this is gonna be minus one half, and then we have the antiderivative of two u minus one over u squared minus u plus one. So I flipped that around. So here, notice that we've got minus half times two u. Well, that's the same thing as minus u. But now we need to worry about this part right here. So at the moment, I have a plus two overall in the numerator, but I've only accounted for a plus one half. So that means in order to have the rest of it, I need a plus three halves. So that means left over, I have plus three halves, and then the antiderivative of one over u squared minus u plus one du. And now I wanna notice that if we carefully look at this, this guy right here will break up into these two parts. So the coefficient of u in the numerator is minus one, and then the constant term in the numerator, well that's gonna be half plus three halves, but that's, that'll be two, so that's good. Now next, we can do another substitution on this guy right here, keeping in mind that the derivative of the denominator is exactly the numerator. So let's maybe make that substitution over here. We'll let t equal u squared minus u plus one, and then we'll see that dt equals two u minus one du. So check it out, this whole thing in the denominator will be t, and then here we have our dt earmuffs in the numerator like that. Okay, so let's maybe bring those first two integrals down. This will be one half antiderivative of one over one plus u du minus half antiderivative of dt over t. Okay, those are fairly straightforward. Now let's see what we can do over here. We have one over an irreducible quadratic, which means we'll probably like to complete the square on that denominator in order to write it as an inverse tangent. So that's the standard trick whenever you have an irreducible quadratic in the denominator. So I'm gonna take this u squared minus u um, and then split this one up into plus one quarter plus three quarters. So you might think, well, how do I know the plus a quarter? Well, to complete the square, I take half the coefficient of this. That'll be minus half. I square it and I get plus a quarter. So that means I need to split a quarter off of that one. Now, obviously there's a bunch of ways of doing that, but that's the way we'll explain it. Okay, but now if we group these two, we can see that we have this nice simplification, u minus half squared plus three Quarters. Now let's bring that down using this uh, rewriting of our, our denominator. So we have three halves, antiderivative of one over u minus half squared, like that. And then plus, I'm gonna write this three quarters in a fancy way. I'm gonna write that as the square root of three over two quantity squared. And then finally, I have a du out here. Now this might be like a standard antiderivative, but let's maybe do all of the steps just for completeness. So I'm gonna factor uh, square root of three over two squared out of the denominator. And let's see what that gives us. So just bringing the rest of these down, I have one half antiderivative of one over one plus u du minus one half antiderivative of t dt over t, and then plus three quarters 
and then times one over, well, the this squared, which will be three over four. So we have that, that's what we took out of the denominator. So that means we've got that thing in the denominator. And then the antiderivative of one over, so this is gonna be u minus half over the square root of three over two, all of this squared plus one du, like that, okay? So finally, I can take this guy right here and rewrite it a little bit. So that'll give us what? 2u minus 1 over the square root of 3. So that's what we have inside of that square. Okay, and then next we can simplify what we have here, keeping in mind that 1 over 3 over 4 is the same thing as 4 over 3. So this 3 and this 3 will cancel and then this two and this four will cancel down to a two in the numerator. Then next, I'll bring this line to the top and we're ready to finish it off. So I brought this final integral we had at the bottom of the board to the top. Now we can finish this last one off with one last substitution. I think we've suitably got the first two in terms that they are just like elementary antiderivatives. So let's see what we can do for this last bit. So let's maybe say, y will be equal to 2u minus 1 over the square root of 3. Well, that is going to make dy equal to 2 over root 3 du, but that means du is equal to root 3 over 2 dy. So these are the two substitutions that will simplify this last integral. So let's see, I'll go ahead and bring this down. We have a half square root of one over one plus u du minus half antiderivative of dt over t plus two. And then we can bring this square root of three over two out. So this is the square root of three over two. Again, that's from our du component. And then we have the antiderivative of one over y squared plus one dy. Now we're good to go. This two cancels this two, and we're left with one half natural log of one plus u minus half natural log of t. But let's go ahead and substitute back in for t this. So we've got u squared minus u plus one. And then finally, plus root three, and this is gonna be the arctan of y. But now we'll use this value for y, that substitution. So we've got two u minus one over root three. Okay, great. And then maybe plus a constant. Okay, so finally we have to substitute back in for our original variable, which is given up here. So we have u cubed equals tangent squared of x. So what does that tell us u is? So u is going to be equal to tangent to the 2 thirds of x. So that's kind of a bummer, but that, that's just the situation here, right? So let's see what we've got. We've got that this is going to be equal to 1 half natural log of tangent to the 2 thirds of x plus 1. That's this first term. Minus half. Then we have the natural log of. So that's going to be tangent to the 4 thirds of x um, minus tan 2 thirds x plus 1 plus root 3. And then finally the inverse tangent, so arctan of well, so we're gonna have twice tangent to the two thirds x minus one over the square root of three. And then here we've got plus a constant. So that would be the final answer. And that's a good place to stop.